they always said I'm wrong But what they doing? Hey, I think they want me gone But I ain't going away They told me I was wrong Alright, the final thing I want to get to tonight before I get out of here is Skip Bayless calling out Kevin Durant. I mean, I'm not going to make this a huge, long process. I don't think we need to inform anyone about Skip Bayless at this point, but apparently LeBron James and Kevin Durant are working out again. Honestly, I think it is a little weird that they're working out together because... I don't know, I just could not, I know that they're friends, I know that they just put it together with the Olympics, but in terms of NBA training, I think it is a little strange that the guy who just beat you in the NBA Finals, or obviously he did, wasn't the only one on the team, but his team just beat you and he was the Finals MVP to train with them. I would I would want to beat him, that's my thought. But Hold I on. Completely did, Hold on. Yeah. Stop. Um... Before I, I want to jump in on this one. Let me jump in. All right. Yeah. Let me, let me kindly jump in with you. When, when the NBA Finals was over, did you guys catch what Durant said about LeBron? Uh, no. Which snack? Yeah. Did you catch what he said about LeBron when he got to the Olympics uh, training sessions? Uh, no, I mean, I, I he said he didn't snacks. want to even see him. He didn't want to look at him. Yeah, that's and, why I think that this is weird. Well, I don't think it's weird because they trained together last year. Yeah. They trained together last year, and I believe that I saw Durant improve. And I, the, the, Tim, did you ever see the footage of them training together? Yeah, I saw last year. I mean, it was a good workout. I mean, no questions about that. I actually look at it. I actually look at it both ways. Well, if they were working out together during the season, I think I'd have a problem with it. You know, I'd be like, what? Yeah. But I look at it both ways. I think LeBron's an idiot. Okay? He's the top dog. He's the best player in the game. And you're letting Durant come and work out with you? Why? Um, I look at it from numerous angles. I think both sides have something to gain and something to lose by them training together. But I'm not going to hold it against Kevin Durant when he, in, in, in his team's losing effort, his performance in the NBA Finals, you ready for this one? And this is the honest to God's truth. You can, you can pull up the stats on any Kobe Bryant Finals that you want. Durant had a better finals than Kobe ever did. Yeah, offensively. I agree. No, yeah, offensively, I agree. Durant. And, and it's not like LeBron was out there setting the world on fire. No, he, he didn't drop 40 on him. Either. No, he just, he had good games. He didn't yeah, have, he did. like, these amazing yeah, games. And what, what LeBron did for his teammates, though, creating the open threes for Mike Miller. Yeah. and uh, Those are always he, there. He always does that. They just actually knocked him down. And, oh, it's Shane Batty. Or, and, and, oh, and here's the way I look at it. Durant got better working out with LeBron. And I think he's looking at it from the standpoint of it's the off season. I'll go work out with him. I improved my game last year. But when the, when the regular season starts, when we play the Heat, I'm going to take it to him. See, there's been this quantum leap that – Working out with a guy in the off season means you're not going to take it to him in the regular season. I guarantee you, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson hung out in the off season. MJ said that you can. There's um. You guys know the the famous Michael Jordan videos. I used to have them on VHS. I don't know which one it was from, but one of the Michael Jordan videos that I had on VHS, and I'm sure they're on you. You can find this on YouTube if you look for it. He said that he had told them no to going to the Olympics in 92. He said, no, you know, I was coming off two years of long playoff runs and just brutal battles with these teams. I, I wasn't going to go. 
and they're trying to talk him into it. They're all, you know, come come for this, come for that. And he said the thing that tipped him over the edge was he really just wanted to go and see how these guys trained and study their practice habits. So Jordan went to the 92 Barcelona team, and according to him, it was to study their practice habits. You know the old saying, keep your um, friends, friends close, close and your enemies closer? Enemies closer, yeah. I think these guys are working out together, yeah. But I think they're also trying to get an edge on each other by trying to learn each other's games. I think this, exactly. I think this is some ex- extreme gamesmanship going on. But we've had a guy go on ESPN, still haven't watched the, the segment. Um, I'm just going off what people told me. We have a guy go on ESPN. He starts taking shots at Kevin Durant for training, uh, training with a, 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 an opponent from the NBA Finals. I don't have a problem with it, especially since they did it last year, and they're friends. Yeah. I mean, Tim, if if you and I had competing podcasts, and then you you know we had some you know battle over some some big storyline or something. And then you told me, well, I'm not coming on your podcast because uh, you got more views than me. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> friends are going to be friends. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't exactly. tell someone to not be friends with somebody just because they happen to be friends and happen to be the two best players in the game. And last year they just so happened to have the two best teams in the game to make it to the finals. They can't just shut that off like a light. They were friends. And that's be- why I, I don't get like when they talk about all oh, the 80s. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird hate each other, but they are friends. I mean, that's the part that I don't understand. You're going to be enemies on the court, but off of it, you're going to be friends. And people act like in the 80s, everyone hated each other. And Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, that they all hated each other and they never talked to each other. And that this is a new thing, that players are friends now. And that That's the part that I really don't get. And I don't know. It's just the the part about... Oh uh, well, you you have to go move to a new team. But in, in the '80s, Magic Johnson didn't have to go move to a new team because he already had Kareem and a, a stacked team. Well, well here's the thing, with... Tim. Here's the other thing. Why didn't anyone have a problem with it last year? Now that their teams made it to the finals, Kevin Durant, <laughs> in my opinion, offensively outplayed LeBron offensively. I mean, do you guys remember all of those big shots he was hitting in the finals? It seems like yeah. since the team lost, everyone's forgotten. And, and no, I came didn't. away from those finals saying to myself, I don't know if LeBron is the clear-cut best player in the league anymore. Even in a losing effort, Durant impressed me that much. But why didn't people have a problem with it last year? I'll Just tell you because why. The- because Skip Bayless made this an issue. Yeah, And he doesn't like Kevin Durant. We know why. Kevin Durant disrespected him. Yep. He totally so now he's going to attack Kevin Durant? Durant? Yep. That's what I view. I mean, I view this as a huge attack on Kevin Durant. Oh, well, well, I know better than you. You know, you should call me and ask me about every every decision you make. What? Well, here's, maybe, here's the fundamental. Here's the fundamental issue. Okay. When we're talking about what they're doing right now, they're working on their individual game. Kevin Durant, <clears throat> let's put it this way. Th- this goes way back for me. When my Bears got waxed by the 49ers in the playoffs in 1985 playoffs, which was the 84-85 season, Walter Payton, I'll never forget when he said this because it meant a lot to me because it gave me hope. He said that their motivating factor coming into the season was avenging that loss. The motivating, for fa- the motivating factor for Kevin Durant, friendship or not, doesn't matter who's in front of him, he's going to play his balls off. Training with LeBron during the off season, it's not going to have any bearing on the way he approaches a game in the regular season or playoffs, none. You know how silly that sounds? When going to be the same player. Y- yes. There, there's guys who have trained together in MMA 
trained together for years, and then they end up fighting, man, they have some of the best MMA fights you've ever seen. Same with boxing. Did Muhammad Ali maybe, say to Larry what? Holmes? You know, my, Larry Holmes trained with Muhammad Ali. And guess what? Larry Holmes went on to become a heavyweight champion for eight years without losing the belt. Yeah. And maybe what Skip Bales is doing, and I, I don't know what the date is, but mark this down, 1246 p.m., Skip Bales is setting himself up for the next person he can hate on. Maybe not directly Kevin Durant, but he all, he's always hated on Russell Westbrook. Maybe the team in general, the Oklahoma City Thunder, he's always going to be overly critical of now to get ratings. No, I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is. All I know is that when I apply common sense as someone who's been a student of the game for as long as I have, that made no sense. I mean, I come home from work and it's trending on Twitter, Skip versus Durant. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, so he's going to peg Durant as his new target. Well, does that surprise you after what Kevin Durant – and Kevin Durant's telling the truth that he doesn't know anything about basketball. He doesn't get it. There's a reason why the guy couldn't crack the starting lineup on his high school team. I mean, I think most of us who played basketball – I mean, some people didn't play basketball from – like me, I played from first grade and on. But – some people didn't play, you know, some people were late bloomers, fell in love with the game a little bit too late, you know, and whatever, and couldn't make the team, or some people just didn't have the talent or whatever. But I think most of us were able to crack the starting lineup. I mean, I started as a freshman in varsity, had Iowa State scouts at my games, my sophomore and my junior years. And then I had to transfer schools and everything got a little fucked up. But... I tell you what, man, if you understand the game of basketball, you know that this is absolutely irrelevant. He is not an idiot. He knows that his game got better last year by by training with LeBron, his individual game. He's working on his individual game. It's not going to have any bearing whatsoever. And if anyone questions how hard he's going to try to go at LeBron, I reference you to the statements where he didn't even, he didn't even want to be around him. You think that's changed? Yeah, he he's grown to tolerate him. They went and, oh well, you know, in that case, maybe he shouldn't have been on the Olympic team with him because the camaraderie that you get in winning a gold medal together. I mean, it's silly. It's an it's a non-issue. And, and I, I don't even think the, 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 about the part about. Skip Bayless didn't play high school basketball. It doesn't bother me if he didn't do that because basketball is my fourth best sport, and I pretty much chose that I, I could be a bench player. Oh, I'm just basketball. being a condescending prick like, about no, yeah, it. I, I know, but what, what I'm saying is essentially I don't even need Skip Bayless to have been in the NBA just to make sense. I mean, I, I don't even think you need to play – Anything to understand that this guy doesn't make any sense. You can play any team sport, anything, and understand that Skip Bayless is an act. I mean, no, no, I agree, Tim. There are there are folks who never played team sports, and I'm talking about organized competitively, who get it. To me, though, the ones who play organized competitive team sports. And let's face it, if you live in a big city, making your high school basketball team and then becoming a starter is a pretty big deal, okay? If you live in a one, two, or three most populated city in your in your state and you're able to be a starter, it's pretty good. And what I've found from all my interaction with people on the Internet, like there's this, there's this guy from uh, New York, big to big time player. I'm not going to say his, his real name, but... Um, he was a big-time player out in New York, Faulkner 23. And a lot of the guys that I talked to and that I know played a high level of competitive competitive hoops. And they get the team concept. And then you get people who they eventually get the team concept. Some people like Tim get it at an early age. They get the team concept. This in no way is going to have any bearing on anything. It's It's a non-issue. I mean, on on the surface, yeah, you know, we want our you know we want our uh, our athletes to hate each other in pro sports. No, that's just not the way it works. 
LeBron James is friends with with Carmelo Anthony. They hang out all the time. When LeBron goes to New York, he stays at Carmelo's apartment or house. Yep. So does that I mean, mean they're not going to go out? Does that mean that? What, why doesn't Carmelo get criticized for that? I remember the story. LeBron stayed with Carmelo when he went out to play the Knicks. Why wasn't that an issue? It's because Kevin Durant said the guy, and you should put this on your channel, Tim, this part of the show. I'm going to. Yeah, it's because Kevin Durant said the guy knows nothing about basketball, so he's taking shots at Kevin Durant and trying to make an issue out of a non-issue. And it's something that on the surface people are going to go, yeah, I don't want them all practicing. What? They're working on their individual games. He's there for selfish reasons. To try to get yeah, better. There's nothing and wrong with that. A lot of ESPN and Skip Bale supporters will say to this is, well, even after the original time where this happened, Skip Bale has still said that he felt that like Kevin Durant was the best player. If Skip Bale is going to do that so he has an out, but in reality, he's going to he's being unfair to Kevin Durant at this point. I, I think it's weird because I wouldn't be able to do that with someone that just beat me in the NBA Files, but I don't really have a issue with it well let me let me put it to you this way if if Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao were training together which would never happen this is theoretical but if they were if they were training together before the hype of them potentially fighting each other and then they fought each other and Floyd Mayweather won and then Manny Pacquiao went back into camp with Floyd I think that'd be the best place to be. You need to study him even more. I mean, you need to study him. But here's the thing. It's not a one-on-one sport. The reason the Thunder didn't win, James Harden played like crap. True. Offensively, Cephalosha played like crap. Nobody, virtually nobody on that team shot over 50% or even close to it. Baca was a non-factor offense. Yeah, he was a non-factor. Yeah. His mid-range game was nice in the season, but in the finals, non-existent. Derek Fisher was putrid. Russell Westbrook was very, very um, volume. Yeah. And whatever Kevin Durant did to go into the finals and average 31 and 55%, keep doing it, man. Yeah. It, it, and I, mean, I really, I don't get the sense that this is going to, we're going to look back in the NBA finals and say, Oh, well, Kevin Durant trained with LeBron James. That's why he didn't win the NBA Finals. Because by then, whatever they're doing differently that they weren't or that they improved on, it's going to be on film and games and everything. It's nothing that Kevin Durant can't learn just by watching a film of the game. He's just improving himself and then having the chance maybe to go against LeBron individually and learn, I guess, a few other of the things for early on matchups. But for... The NBA files. This really it doesn't change anything. Well, here's the other thing, Tim. Inside, I know what Kevin Durant's thinking. I'm not a mind reader, but it's obvious. Deep down inside, he's thinking, "My fucking teammates let me down." He's not going to publicly say it. He's not going to come out and say, uh, "You think I was the problem? Did you not see the way my teammates played in the finals? You think I yeah. was the problem?" LeBron didn't beat me. His team beat my team. That's what he's thinking, but he can't publicly say it because he would be viewed as a dick and his teammates would turn on him and, well, maybe they would. Some might respond properly and step their game up. It, you know, this might have been the situation where he should have stepped up and said, look, I'm going to work out with LeBron because last year I felt like I improved. And I like what we do in the training camp. In, in fact, a lot of the drills that they do, according to the video that I saw, are they're not even really working out with, with each other. It's separate. They're taking turns. So, actually, if I was him, I would have just called out my teammates. If it was Iverson, he would have called out his teammates. If it was Jake Cutler, he would have called out his teammates. But it's Kevin Durant. He's not going to do that. But Kevin Durant, people respond differently because Kevin Durant has 
ten times the teammates Allen Iverson ever had, or, and really Jay Cutler's had for a lot of his career, especially in Chicago. Well, too bad they didn't no ma- perform. And that's true. Okay, that's but true. But to me, to me, the way his teammates played in the finals, inexcusable. Yeah, the way that they played. I mean, they, I mean, yeah, that, they were better teammates, but they just didn't show up. Kendrick oh. Perkins was a non-factor. Garbage. Nick Complete Collison track. was a foul machine. Um, <laughs> I mean, James Harden, this dude got lost in his own beard. <laughs> <laughs> Cephalosha went from being a, a player who was actually contributing offensively to just nothing. Derek Fisher took some of the dumbest shots. I mean, Whoa, Derek Russell Fisher Westbrook. Derek Fisher. Yeah. Russell Westbrook had one good game. Out of five, yeah. and I I've been defending Westbrook, but I can't defend the way he played in the finals. He, he kind of laid an egg in the finals. He laid a huge egg. The only guy who played at a high level in the finals was Kevin Durant. He has the right to do whatever he wants. The spotlight should be. This is the way I would approach that topic. Okay, so Kevin Durant is training with LeBron James, trying to work on his game. The fuck is James Harden doing? Yep. And, and Tim, you're back on. What is what is James right. Harden doing? That's what that's what I want to know. What's James Harden doing? What's Russell Westbrook working on? The this is the story, because the story coming out of that series should have never been LeBron beat Durant. It's not a it's not boxing. The story should have been. Well, you know the lovable Oklahoma City Thunder. The only guy that really showed up was the superstar. Does he need more help? How many times have you heard anyone say, well, Durant needs more help? That's what it looked like in the finals if these guys are going to fold like that. And by the way, very reminiscent of uh, LeBron in Cleveland. Exactly, it was. You're right. Because they, everybody thought that, you know, they assumed that the Cavaliers supporting cast was going to show up, but... Mo, Mo, I call him Mo No Show Williams. He didn't show up. I mean, yep. <laughs> the rest of Bears Dow, whatever you want to call him, he didn't show up either. So all those guys, Jameson, just they're just guys, and they 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 did not live up to you know their potential. They didn't yeah. play good. So I I think the best way to look at it, Tim, I understand you're befuddled by the fact that he would go work out with the guy who's the best player on the team that his team lost to. But the way I would look at it is very simple. The dude is trying to work on his individual game. He improved last year with what he did. He's going to do it again because he feels like he can still improve. And the skills coaches that the, that he's going to be working with are top notch. And um, you know, come tip off in the regular season when we're all sitting there watching our league pass, the only thing that's going to be on this guy's mind is doing everything he can to contribute to his team winning. That's it. That's that's the mindset. He's not going to be like, well, we're playing the Heat today. Uh, you know, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to. Uh, I'm not going to play hard defense because I like LeBron. He, no, he's going to go at LeBron James even harder. But the but the question is, the question is, what are his teammates going to do? Yeah, I mean, and I, I'll set this phone down after I laid that pipe bomb. Yeah, what, what, what have you always been taught about sports? You only get better by playing against competition and people who are better than you. Exactly. He's playing, That's the only way gonna be He's the second best player in the world. Who else is he supposed to compete against? The number three the best, first player, best player. You compete against the best player. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, I mean. But I guess it's a newer concept to people now. I don't know the fact well, that I mean, LeBron would do that. I don't know why. No, it's a I mean, new concept yeah. to people. Knowing, knowing those two, they're probably still friends on somewhat type of level. They're they're sharing tips with each other, and Durant is picking up. LeBron pretty much knows everything there is already. Durant's still getting better. He's just okay. Up here's the- where another contradiction comes in from the media. I was going to set my phone down, but I've got another little M80 light off here. Um, what happened when the media found out that LeBron James had been calling ex-legends for advice? What did Reggie Miller say? Reggie Miller said, 
LeBron shouldn't be calling uh, ex-players. He's the best in the game. He should be giving today's players advice and helping today's players. And I guarantee you, I don't know for a fact, but I guarantee you, old uh, Wrinkle Face probably went right with that. Yeah, I agree with Reggie. I mean, it, it is it is blatantly microanalyzing non-issues. If anyone in their right mind, if they follow Kevin Durant, and you followed everything that he said, and you think that going into a one- or two-week individual skills training camp with the same skills coaches that LeBron uses in the same building is going to affect his approach to the game, you are sorely mistaken, and you really don't know anything about Kevin Durant. I expect him to come out with an MVP. So he comes out and wins an MVP. I hope these people come out and say, well, I was wrong. No, they won't. They're wrong. Kevin Durant's the man, and he's going to have a great year. It's up to his teammates and how they play in the Western Conference Finals. And if they play at a high level in the Western Conference or in the Western Conference playoffs and get to the finals, how are they going to perform on the biggest stage? Because I know Kevin Durant's going to bring his A game. The question is, will they? Just a little bit around the corner from fear. Ah. Be, be there, ah. next year. Where I'm going.